I watched every UEFA game just so you don't have to. <laughs> well, not everyone because I have so many eyes and I can't go, but mainly the UEFA Champions League and the UEFA Europa League games. And let's talk about it. Arsenal proved how much experience matters in the Champions League. Real Madrid don't win because of aura, they don't win because of um, luck, they don't win because of black magic, they win because of experience. And Arsenal proved it that day. Bayern Munich were just so more clinical with their chances. They had two shots on targets and they scored on both chances. The penalty um, error from Saliba was needless. Ben White was already there. Why, why do you have to foul? You don't have to foul. There was no reason to foul. So, the game was just a showcase in how much experience matters in Champions League football. You just can't go there and go and be feeling G3 and go and be... Is there, and when it comes to the um, penalty decisions from the ref, I think the ref had a really, really poor game. That, that amber from Gabriel was an amber. <laughs> there was no saying it was a childish mistake. That's part of the things you account for in football. It happens if he made a mistake. It's not the fault of the Bayern players that he made a mistake. His mistake is on him. So why do Bayern have to suffer for that mistake? And the Saka penalty, I don't care what anybody says. I think it's a penalty. Yes, Saka leaned in. Yes, Saka went for the contact. But this is professional football. Will you lie that you've never seen a player on your team do the same thing that Saka did that day? He went for the contact. Why did the keeper leave his leg dangling there? You can't... In the World Cup, a team won the World Cup with penalties like this. If you are going to say the Saka penalty was not a penalty, the people that won World Cup with this kind of penalties in court, will you collect their World Cup from them? This is just... It's just modern football. There's no way you slice it. It's just modern football. What I expect from the second leg, I expect Arsenal to be more... Um, more mature and more composed. They, they've seen that they can hurt my, uh, Bayern Munich. They've seen that they can make them bleed. So it's now for them to cut out the mistakes and go for them and go for the win. I still think Arsenal progress from this time. So let's watch and see. Next week, we'll see what will happen. Real Madrid versus Manchester City. This game, as a Real Madrid fan, I still feel till today, I still feel in my heart that we let this win get away. We should have won that game. Like, there was no excuse. We had so much more, like we had so much more chances. And if you look at the stats, you probably look at no, these chances were not no. The chances were we had more quality chances. Let me say. So let let me not say more chances. We had more quality chances that we should have put away. Vinicius put Vinicius missed chances that should have put away. His final ball was poor in that game. And that's unlike the current Vinicius, you know, but his final ball was poor. Vinicius had chances that I've seen him score in that same position on numerous times. Like, anytime Vinicius is in that position, you expect him to score. And he missed those chances on the day. And I just can't help but feel that we let that one get away. And it will be an equivalent task to even beat Manchester City in their own. Because we've never done it before. And you can never counter Real Madrid that, obviously. But we've never done it before. It's going to be something hard to do. We could have made our task easier by winning the game when the game was right in our hands. There was no Kai Walker. There was no Kevin De Bruyne. Like, their team was not at full strength. We had the chance to win and we let it get away. But on the Manchester City side, probably one of the best results they could have gotten. I believe they came into the tie expecting a draw or losing by a slim margin. Because we had everything on our side everything went right for us to win and then we started the game with a rookie mistake and let them score from a freaky like those kinds of mistakes we, we need to we need to call those kinds of mistakes out against manchester city you can't let manchester city have the ball for 30 straight minutes and you are not doing anything to challenge them they are not doing anything to make them think about their passes they were just passing the ball around us when we went up to one we went up to one and we started defending for no reason like you can't let big teams have those kind of passage of play that you don't do anything you don't do anything to question them you don't do anything to make them change their tactic or to make them uh, uncomfortable we just let them play their game and they got two straight two quick fire goals how did they get these two quick fire goals shots from outside the box sitting can we stop letting these guys shoot from outside the box sitting we've considered in how many straight matches against these guys by letting them shoot from outside the box just close down the player i don't know i'm not a coach are probably not a, as good of a football mind as Ancelotti. But I should think that we play this team enough to realize the kinds of goals that we consider against these people. Why are we not closing down the shots? It's always so annoying when somebody shoots from way out and nobody is closing him down. If somebody is closing him down, okay, no problem. Let him get the lock and he gets the shot up, let him score. 
but why are you guys not closing down the shot why is everybody like five meters away from the shooting from the shooter rider value okay yes value you know he's a defender maybe he doesn't have the tendency and you guys are looking at he's probably not going to shoot but phil Foden is he has the most goals from outside the box sitting in the premier league this season in, among Premier, amongst Premier League players, rather, he has the most goals from outside the box sitting. So why are we letting him shoot from outside the box sitting? We know he can make these shots. Why are we letting him take that shot? I don't understand. And let's not turn this video to a Real Madrid rant video. I just feel like we could have won that game and we let it get away. The second leg. What do I expect from the second leg? Obviously, <laughs> I want a Real Madrid win, but it's still a toss up. These are two evenly matched teams, and according to reports, um, Kai Walker might be back for the second leg. So. It's, it remains to be seen what the game plans are going to be. Um, in the first leg, we had Vinicius playing through the middle and Rodrigo playing to the left and it worked to an extent. So let's see what happens in the second leg. PSG versus Barcelona. Mbappe disappointed me, I'm not going to lie. I even made a trailer and made Mbappe out to be that leader. <laughs> and he just came and he came and went with a win pack. He had zero shots on target, and I'm not going to say it's like it's an indictment on Mbappe. It's more of praise to the Barcelona defense because they defended as a team. They defended well in that game. They didn't let them. They didn't let PSG get a whiff of goal except for like the first few minutes of the second half where they slacked off and uh, PSG went ahead. But for the major parts of the game, Barcelona defended well. They defended as a team. They closed down the. Um, they closed down the balls on the edge of the box. The game was two sides of a coin. That's that's how I'm going to describe it. The game was two sides of a coin. PSG was showing us how not to defend. While Barca was showing us how to defend as a team. Like it was, it was night and day. The defenses of both teams were night and day. And Rafinha, Barcelona fans, you need to appreciate Rafinha more. I'm going to tell you this for free. You need to react. Rafinha, every single game I've watched of Rafinha this season, he has been class. He has been really, really good. But every time I log on Twitter, there's always a Barcelona fan trying to insult Rafinha and say he's not good. He should be benched for Yamal and stuff like that. That guy was fantastic in that game. He was Barcelona's best player. Like, there's no uh, arguments for, like, maybe that was... He was, like, clear, hands down, he was the best player on the pitch on both sides. So, I don't know why you guys don't appreciate this guy. He's very good, evidently, and he's showing his week in and week out. PSG had a lot of problems in that game. They couldn't find the pass before the assist. They couldn't find Debele or Mbappe in dangerous positions. And when they could find them in those positions, when they could play that pass before the assist, they got two goals. So, I don't know how PSG are going to do it. But their problem is not their attack. They can have a 10-minute stretch where everything goes right for them and they get goals. But how do they lock up in behind? Donnarumma, how does he stop making these mistakes? I still don't know how that guy on seated um Kilonava from that PSG um, starting lineup. They have to find a way to lock up shop and not get and not let Barcelona get in behind because they played okay in that game. They didn't play really well, but they played okay in that game. They could have got off with a draw in that match if Donnarumma didn't make mistakes like firing the ball to a Barcelona player or not coming out for the Christensen goal where you should have come out like the places it's supposed to come out it won't come out but the places where it's supposed to stay home that's when it starts coming out and making mistakes and for the barcelona team i don't think they have an higher gear that they can unlock apart from this and if they can do more of this they will easily dispatch psg yeah and the final game is atletico madrid versus dortmund honestly i didn't really watch this game but after i went to see clips and condensed version of the game Dortmund made the worst mistake that you can make when playing against Atletico Madrid. And I'm saying this as somebody that plays, we've played Atletico Madrid how many times this season? I've lost counts. You don't let Atletico Madrid score. You don't let them score. First few minutes of the game, you already considered. And you didn't just give them one goal. You gifted them two goals. You are not coming back from getting down two goals against Atletico Madrid with Diego Simeone as the coach. It's not, it's not possible. It's not possible. Does not make the worst mistakes they could make. So, what they can do now is remedy that in the second leg. But I honestly don't see that happening. If they can get a quick goal early in the second leg, maybe they have a chance. But Dortmund this season have not been as convincing as we usually expect them to be. But anything can happen. This is football. So the three games I picked yesterday were West Ham versus Bayer Leverkusen, Liverpool versus Atlanta, and AC Milan versus Roma. Let's go with AC Milan versus Roma first. Um, I honestly don't have a lot to say about the game other than 
AC Milan should have gotten more out of the game and their finishing was poor. The last few minutes that I really pay attention to, Chukweze was fantastic. And that's the thing I'm going to say. Can Chukweze please bring these performances to the Super Eagles? Why are you dribbling three people in the last few minutes of a Champions League game? Where the pressure is highest, you are losing. <laughs> the pressure, I can't imagine the pressure in the last minutes of a Champions League game when you are losing compared to the pressure of playing for the Super Eagles. Bro, just do the same thing for the Super Eagles, please. I'm just begging. And then the Bayer Leverkusen versus West Ham game. West Ham, I tweeted it out yesterday that West Ham could not defend like that 90 minutes. It's just, it just wasn't possible. You can't expect to defend from minutes 1 to minutes 90. Well, the game plan was sound. Everybody was doing their job, but you just can't sustain that level of um, pressure. You can't take that level of pressure on you. Leverkusen did help them though, because if they had been composed with maybe one or two of those shots in the first half, they probably would have gone in at the break in the lead. I really don't see them coming back in this tide. Liverpool. Honestly, <laughs> I have no words for these guys because it's been the same story every single day of the season. Why can't you guys take your chances? I was surprised when I heard that um, Darwin Nunes has 18 goals and I think 12 assists or so. How did he get there? Because this team has not been clinical. They have never been clinical this season. They keep missing chances and maybe they get it deflected. Mohamed Salah go and they go ahead. Like, it's always so annoying. When you know, like, watching the game, I don't know, maybe I watch games differently, but watching the game from the first half, I knew, I just felt like this thing is going to bite them in the ass. How do you not take your chances? Look at Atlanta. Every chance they had, except the few, the Catalan um, chances that he missed, but most of the chances that they needed to put away, they put everything away and now they are 3 up for it. Like, why can't you guys just put your chances? That's mentality, I just, that mentality of victims, like, I will get them back, we'll get the goal. Stop it. When you have your chance, score. Like, is this not your job? Why can't you score? Why is Darwin Nunes not able to head the ball? I know that you are a striker. You should be able to head the ball. Why are you not putting your chances in the back of the net? And every time it comes back to buy them. Honestly, I've sold my stocks in Liverpool Europa League this season and it's painful to me because I'm a club fan and I wished he got more trophies in this in his final year, but it just doesn't seem like it's going to happen anymore with the performance that they put up yesterday. I don't think they are going to be able to score four goals to win this uh, tie or even three goals to draw the tie, honestly, because Atlanta have everything they need right now. They can just defend from minutes one to minute ninety and take their win. They don't need to do and they don't need to do anything out of the ordinary. They just need to secure this trio and take it away. They have they've won already, honestly, and yeah. That's, that's what I expect from the second leg. Atlanta to win. I don't see, except there's a miracle, but I don't I don't think this team has a miracle in their back pocket, this Liverpool team. I don't think so. Thank you for watching this video. This will probably be minimally edited because I still have other videos to edit and the videos will slow down in a few weeks' time because I'm going to serve my country. I'll make videos ahead of time and post them. Yeah. So, I think that's it. Thank you for watching this video. Smash that like button, hit subscribe for more football content. Yeah, thank you.